glorious Highland time lapse. It must be. This week, if I can get back in time, I'm going to attempt to record my first out of the box piece of music in, I'd say, since I was 18 years old. So, first, let's head down to the shed. That's where hopefully this time my lav mic is working. There's a really strange node in the corner here that's exactly the same as the pitch of my voice. Anyway, you probably want me to rewind a sec because you're probably asking why did the titles to Modular Mondays change to the Modular Project? This is because basically the first Modular Monday was done on a Monday. That's the only reason why it's called Modular Mondays and it's a muh and a muh. No other reason at all. It's been a kind of arbitrary kind of shackle for Sandy and I. So much so I've agreed with him that we'll still try and do endeavour to do one a week but it won't necessarily fall on a Monday. Basically, I'm part way through creating a performance of patch, and I just wanted to basically try my new out-of-the-box system out for the first time. So I'll take you through the patch as it currently stands. It's probably gonna change, although the very kind of root clock that I have for the patch is kind of wrong. I don't know if you've ever built IKEA furniture. If you start, if the screw goes in the wrong way around for the very first piece, you have to unpack the whole thing. So I hope not, because I think the, the piece is, is okay. It's getting there. So basically what I've got is my piano, these two M149s going to these radial reamps to get the voltagey thingy correct. That is then going into, I'm splitting the stereo signal, going into this MXR box. Uh, basically the point of that is uh, what happens is I play the piano direct through this big sky stereo, I loop it, and then basically by hitting this, I kill one side of the uh, basically the direct signal. I alter the blend on the sustain pedal, and then suddenly I'm just in the land of. Again, everything kind of looping through the loop station and then going into the big sky on uh, a chorale setting. So that's the kind of live element. I think what's interesting is I've had to learn a new skill. Basically, I'm as I'm a keyboard player, I always play ahead of the beat. So basically, the, the loop tends to be a little bit faster than the BPM. So what I have to do is put this up and down to keep the piano in time. What else have we got going on here? So basically, STO which is an oscillator made by Make Noise, is the bass. Clock is being controlled by the Metropolis sequencer here, and that is controlling an ADSR, so you can see it, which is in turn controlling the VCA. So STO, VCA, being controlled by the ADSR, being controlled by the sequencer, terminating in this little mini mixer in the skiff, which is in turn going into the hex mix. The pitch of the bass is being controlled by the Rene. As you can see, it's subdivided hugely, so it's moving off to different pitches after every eight clicks there. I'm also using these other matrices on the Rene to control various CV inputs on the Chimera, which is again subdivided by the 4MS to trigger the hi-hat part. I find having the hi-hat and the bass centre on one mono track is kind of uh, quite a useful thing. We're limited for tracks here. Next up is some synths. This is a mixture of the pluck and the Atlantis on a massive, we've got a slow ramp provided by the math, which is controlling, uh, they're both going into a voltage controlled filter here and then into the Echophon. Well, the uh, Atlantis is going into the Echophon. And what I love about delayed created uh, kind of uh, sequenced effects is you can put a kind of groove in, it's, it's slightly swung. Da, 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 da. Slightly dotted feel. This is then going into the herb verb. I've also got the pluck going into that magneto and then going into this voltage controlled filter here. And then I've got both of these signals going into the clouds, but their signal is basically split and their signal being sent to the clouds is controlled by this voltage controlled filter. I'm kind of getting lost myself in all of this, but basically what you'll hear is these long undulated passages where you've got a combination of that stuff coming in and then this stuff chasing it. 
And then I've got the D fan totally kind of independently doing a nice kind of cool kick drum pattern. All of that rubbish is basically going direct into this RME 8 track A to D converter, which is uh, AES, which is in turn going into this thing here, the Tascam 64 track uh, recorder, and it's given me red light fever all over again. Basically, you have to put it into record to, to monitor direct through, and I'm actually recording at 96 K, which basically means it is actually turns it into a 32 track recorder. It's going then into the Rupert Neve desk. And as you can see, I'm firing off all sorts of lunch boxes. It basically means the inserts are always live, but to get the returns, you have to put these in. I'm not going to be doing mixing today because this performance, this patch isn't finished, but I hope to finish it next week and show you how I'm going to use my lunchbox to mix. It's just one too many things to get my head around. And then if we go down here, we've got everything terminated at the Mix Pre 10. The stereo track finish that you will hear today will be recorded into that. Right, and what's uh, Sandy been up to since recovering from Namthrax? Hi Christian. So this week I'm taking a look at Qubit's scanned module, which they were kind enough to send me. Um, now this is a really interesting sort of sound generating module, somewhere between a kind of percussion and a kind of VCO module. Uh, you can see I'm triggering it here with a button, um, but you can also trigger it with a, a voltage trigger. Um, it's essentially a sort of a strange combination of physical modelling and wavetable synthesis. So it's essentially using sort of a modelling of a, uh, a sort of physics of two different bodies interacting, like a hammer and a kind of spring, to draw a wavetable and then the, the sound is generated by sort of scanning that wavetable that's being drawn. So the nice thing with this module is it uses a sort of a physical interaction between some of the different parameters. So you can see I've got these controls on the right that are under this sort of hammer control. Uh, these can have quite a distinctive um, effect on the sound. That's kind of your strength and shape and, and um, scanning rate um, for the sound. And then the, the controls on the left, including the big pitch knob that I'm adjusting there, um, those have sort of things like mass and um, centre of gravity and so on. And each of them can have quite a, uh, a dramatic effect on the sound, but the thing that makes this a really interesting module for experimenting with is that uh, slight changes in one parameter can change the behaviour of another parameter. So for instance, if you reduce the mass on the left-hand side, then the strength and the shape uh, controls of your hammer will have a different effect on the sound. So you can hear there's an absolutely huge variety of different timbres coming out of this. Um, again, they can range from short percussive bursts to almost kind of FM sounds or feedback loops and you know, ever-expanding bursts of noise. Um, and sometimes you just get that sweet spot like this where it will basically self-generate like an oscillator, and when you feed it a trigger, it starts off this slowly evolving, you know, peculiar ringing sort of vocal sound almost. So my goal with this module, uh, this is really sort of experimenting with some of the sounds that I can get out of it, but over the next couple of videos, I'm going to be taking a look at some of the other modules that I've added recently, and how I'm going to use that to try and write some quite... Um, experimental sounding, maybe what you'd call post-techno, the sort of stuff that um, Richard Devine or John Hopkins or Amon Tobin are writing. And I think this module is probably going to be central to that sound. So you can hear, I mean, this is quite a, quite a dramatic sound really.
Sometimes you'll find the almost the opposite of a sweet spot where it will barely make any kind of sound at all, it will just cut off quite suddenly. And sometimes you can get it to really almost feed back on itself so that the um, it sort of slowly loses control. Some of these vowel sounds would make it really quite appropriate for the kind of bass line um, or bass VCO sort of sounds. Uh, if you can imagine putting this through a low pass filter or, you know, sequencing a bunch of triggers into this. And again, you get some almost percussive sounds out of this. Now, as you can see, I'm only taking the patch from the output into here, just straight into my uh, output module. But you can see you've got a whole bunch of other CV controls accessible on the front there. Basically, any one of these knobs can be controlled via CV. Um, giving you a huge variety of control over this sort of sound morphing ability of the module. Here's another one of those sweet spots. So that was it with just the button. Let's try patching it up and, uh, you know, sticking some triggers into it. I'm using my algorithmic drum sequencer, the Beast Tech Amoeba, which I'll be looking at in quite a lot of depth in an upcoming video. Um, but I'm going to just sort of jump around here, try plugging essentially gates and triggers into all of the different um, CV addressable controls, uh, including the volts per octave, which makes things really sort of jump and squeak. Um, and you can hear quite quickly how you get almost like a drum beat or like a, a sort of sequenced beat sound out of just this one module. I'll jump around so you can hear some of the different uh, You can hear how it can get into quite unpredictable territory, which would be really handy for mixing that with some of the more predictable and sequenced elements from the analog rhythm and the analog four. So anyway, that was the scanned module from Qubit. Back to you, Christian. Thanks as always, Sandy, for your fantastic contributions. Right, back to the shed.
Thanks as always for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, plenty more out of the box action coming. Uh, if you'd like to be notified the next time we put a video up, just ding the bell and one of those always welcome. See you next time.